As a performer myself, you know, when you were growing up, there was one event that everybody aspired to. Any major artist wanted to perform in front of our British monarchy, the royal family, particularly at the Royal Variety Performance, or as it was called, the Royal Command Performance way back when. It all started, you know, in 1912, and it was all put together really by the fact that the royal family wanted to do so much good by helping people come back to the theatre all in the aid of charity, which was helping those actors, those new music hall stars, people, of course, in the world of cinema and backstage, everybody really in that particular arts world who maybe have fallen on hard times, needed some assistance or simply fallen out of favour with the public. We know all about those, don't we? So it's a strange thing, isn't it, that this year you wouldn't have seen too much about this in the mainstream media because only a couple of nights ago now at the Royal Albert Hall, that prestigious venue, the Earl and Countess of Wessex turned up to support said charity over a hundred years. Wonderful thing when you think about it. It was hosted by the comedian Lee Mack and a plethora of stars and you know, <laughs> you know my thoughts on some of those, it's a bit debatable, uh, gave up their time though for free and uh, entertained the vast paying crowd which has created a lot of money for this year's charity. It's interesting to note though that it's screened on the commercial channel ITV and normally, you know, when I was sort of growing up, it used to alternate between the BBC one year and ITV another. And the reason being is that they both got a fair share of what they considered this prestigious event. It was a ratings hit and people, as I say, wanted to be associated with it. The biggest stars appeared, you know, from the American greats like, of course, Bob Hope. Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., to our homegrown talent like Max Bygraves, Bruce Forsyth, everybody wanted to be a part of it. So why has it not been on the BBC now for over 11 years? Well, according to a very good source, this is all really to do with the fact that the BBC have decided it's a rather expensive event to cover. Outside broadcast cameras, directors, that sort of thing. Now, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Because the BBC are willingly uh, shelling out millions for the likes of Claudia Winkleben and, of course, the sports presenter Gary Lineker. So it doesn't really hold fire. So for the last 11 years, it's been, of course, given a slot, which is nice, on the ITV commercial channel, but doesn't necessarily rate as well because obviously we have those kind of rather annoying commercials in between it, so people do lose interest. Also, this used to be screened on a very prestigious evening, Saturday or Sunday night, in a prime time slot. In the last couple of years, it's been put on midweek and it's hardly been given any publicity at all. So seemingly, Britain's premier broadcasting corporation, the BBC, don't necessarily think this is a charity worth supporting. All the while, they're more than happy, of course, to put their people to front their own favourite charities, like Children in Need, which makes a lot of money, not just for them, but of course for the charities associated. If I were the people behind the Royal Variety performance, I would ask, where is the support of Britain's premier channel, the BBC? If they're willing to pay out, as I say, millions of pounds to others, why not go to support some of the wonderful people that may have fallen on hard times, but have entertained us for so many years? As ever, I wish everybody all the very best who was associated with this year's Royal Variety performance, and it's on our screens too. And a huge thank you to the Earl and Countess of Wessex for attending, ensuring, of course, that it's still a major royal event. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.